Not anymore. Birthday party for him because it's his 82nd birthday today. So happy birthday, Tim. Happy birthday. Happy Tim. birthday, Possum. <laughs> <laughs> now then, we're about to welcome another very glamorous TV star to share the sofa. Do you mind sharing the limelight? Tim? I don't in the least mind, and I hope it's a beautiful woman. <laughs> it is a beautiful it one. Is. Penelope Keith, star of classic sitcoms The Good Life and To The Manor Born, has a brand new show, has a cheeky title. It's called To The Manor Reborn. But first of all, let's have a look at the sitcom that inspired the title of this new show. Uh, he said, well, it was a love story. And everyone loves a love story, don't they, they do, uh, Dan? <laughs> I have a bit of a love affair from a distance with you because oh. you've been described on this wonderful seminal and pivotal television programme <laughs> as a TV star. I know Penelope Keith, however, also as a distinguished stage star. You we all began on the boards. And you have been playing at the Theatre Royal Haymarket the same as I was recently. I oh, know. those wonderful boards, aren't they Should wonderful? We just leave them to it. Come on. Yes. Well, well, just, 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 <laughs> what a history. <laughs> and I love this new show. Good. I have a bit of influence at the BBC. <laughs> no. <laughs> and when they submitted this to me, to the mm. Manor Reborn, yes. in yes. which people who can afford to buy a manor house. Yes. Old people, well, old manor houses... Or people who are rich down, like you. Who are rich like me. Yes. You <laughs> show them how to revamp them. Revamp. And make them lovely. Yes, make them lovely again, make them live again, be able to go in and touch all the furniture and lie on the beds. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a brand new show. It's To the Manor Reborn. It's on Thursdays and Sundays, depending where you are in the UK. People really want their houses turned into Tudor, Georgian. Mm, no. no. But it's, it's kind of like a bit, you know, it's a trust house or not being restored. But it's if National a, Trust House yeah. being, being restored, well, being reinvented, because mostly when you see National Trust Houses, they were lived in by one family. Mm. And this one was lived in by lots of different families. And the interesting thing about this one is you've got four definite periods of history. So you've got Tudor, Georgian. Keeler was a man. You know Marmalade? Keeler Ma Marmalade. Yes, I yes. do. I well, he, <laughs> Mr. Keeler Marmalade. That Christine Keeler, is it? Not, no, not no. even distantly related. <laughs> um, he invested a lot of money and had a good time and restored the stones, Avebury stones, older than Stonehenge. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Darling. And what an exciting process that you are sharing. I'm with sharing us. not only with them but with you as well. That's I did so many wonderful things. I saw flax being woven into linen. I saw carpets being made. I saw silk being dyed. I went to Holland to yes. see the marbling at Hetlu mm. Palace. I actually had got into the royal bath at Baths in my Georgian nighty with Dan Cruikshank. Top that. I couldn't. <laughs> No. Why would you want to try? <laughs> uh, no, you're going to stay with us for the rest of the show. But you see, I told the BBC to do this. this is, you know, <laughs> because I knew it was a good idea and I gave it the green light, Penelope Keith. I'm and so this, pleased. by the way, is the distinguished Penelope Keith. And I'm on this lovely little show called The One Show. <laughs> <laughs> and my guest is Chris. Chris <laughs> Evans. Fine and by us. Absolutely fine by us. Absolutely fine. <laughs> Now, today is November the 25th, which means the next 25th is Christmas Day. It's a sheep's milk cheese. Like one? I'd like to apologise for the cheese hedgehog, mm. the pineapple oh. thing. I am a classy man. Someone out there isn't. They just... Nothing wrong with pineapple and cheese on sticks. There's everything wrong, wrong with That's pineapple and cheese on sticks. What's missing <laughs> is a little bit of salami there. Do you think so? And a little gherkin. And, and maybe a, a cherry. Stick, it, it would be. And the cheese is big, it's strong, mm. it's creamy, it's all over. I things. think it's a fantastic it? cheese. Mm. And I've ruined it for you now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Penelope. And then next to it, even more thrillingly, we have the, the best Australian cheese. Oh! This is Moss Vale Blue made by Berries Creek right. Gourmet Cheese in Poowang, which is only 100 kilometres from Melbourne. <laughs> Uh, in where? Uh, Poo Poo Wang. I thought you said. Yeah. I did say Poo Wang, and there's nothing funny about that at all. No. I think we can smell it in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> it's also quite a striking cheese. Damienda, I understand that your friend Les Patterson was chair of the Australian oh. Cheese Board. Oh. He's this... no friend of mine. Oh. But Have you fallen out? He's a bit of a cheese man. He is, and he pioneered the Tasmanian oh. blue mauve vein cheese. Mauve. Right. And does yeah. he come from Poo Wang? 
<laughs> Many people come from Brewland. Well. Uh, Jay, give us, uh, give us three really quick tips three on how we really... can enhance our cheese experience. All right, one, do not store it too cold, no lower than five degrees in the top or the bottom of the fridge, wherever the warmest part of your fridge is. Mm -hmm. Two, don't wrap it in cling film, always wrap it in greaseproof paper so it can breed. breed what about foil? If you want to roll with foil, look at the clothes you're wearing. Clearly, you're big on foil. <gasps> so. Greaseproof oh, wow. paper, I'm giving you the rules. Number three, do not serve it too cold. It should be nice and warm so that the soft cheeses are starting to run away. Yes, they've got to run away. They're going to come out to meet you and welcome you and greet they you. They haven't got to meet you. And how about when a cheese starts to go mouldy that isn't meant to be mouldy in the fridge? Can you cut the mould off and carry on? There will it? be somebody out there who will scream at me health and safety when I say I think you can cut the mould off a good hard cheese. Just get right past it. However... I give it to the birds. Yes. If uh, <laughs> this birds. is wrong, I will be told about it on social media later on in the evening. All right. <laughs> And after the success of our viewer trifle challenge, we have another one. We do have another challenge. We okay. have a mince pie challenge. We're on the hunt to find the nation's favourite mince pie, the finest our one-show viewers have. I think when you take a picture of the mince pie, you should have a cross-section of it. You should see what it looks like. Absolutely. Yes. Open the mince pie. And smell it. And smell okay. it. Okay, so if you could send us a cross-section of your mince pie, that would be amazing. <laughs> that nice These picture. are fantastic. Oh. So cool. So nice. Same Edna. Well... This is from uh, Julie Davies yep. of West Sussex, and she says, This is a photo of myself, Lisa, and Debbie all set to do the Charleston. Ah. <laughs> the Charleston, oh. Al. I'll stand tomorrow to the Charleston. Penelope, what do you have for Sent us? Sent in by Keith and Sam oh. Watley, Exeter yep. from Exeter in Devon. And this is my wife and I dancing in the Maldives on our honeymoon. Very romantic. Yeah. yeah. It's very Mamma Mia, isn't it, that one? Mm. Very Mamma Mia. Very yeah. Mamma Mia. Now, earlier on, we met a man called Mervyn, whose obsession with fire engines has seen him and his wife travel the country, spotting them for the past 40 years. Lucy Siegel is with Mervyn outside his house now. <laughs> Lucy, it's time to let him in on his big surprise. Here we go. Yes, it's... Nightmare. I'm talking specifically... Anyway, never mind. We're talking uh, about Noah. Noah. <laughs> yeah, we are. Noah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, throughout this show, speed sculptor Francis, who's with us here, has been working on a replacement for the head of Dame Edna's statue <laughs> in Melbourne. Because Dame Edna doesn't like it, we must doesn't point that like out. doesn't like the yeah. statue, do you? No, I no, don't no, like no. the sculpture of me in Melbourne. Dame Edna speaking to you now. <laughs> <laughs> now Francis, you're it. a serious sculptress, though, aren't you? I'm serious, yeah. You do this for fun, but you, you've done the Queen and I, the Duke of yes, Edinburgh. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. How did Dame Edna compare as a model to the Queen? Well, it's, I haven't been near royalty till now. Right. Since, the since then. So, yeah. Quite yeah. right. Yeah, how do you feel okay. about that, Dame Edna? Yeah. OK, well, are Did we... she sound very sincere? <laughs> <laughs> As an actress, what would you say, Penelope? Was that sincere or not? Oh, terribly sincere. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, you can I take this with you to Australia. Really, you can. OK. Are we ready to Do we have a fanfare or something? Here we go. My skin is not quite so tanned, <laughs> as that. but it's very, very, very good. good. Much better than the other one. Yeah. Francis, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. You happy with that, genuinely? I am genuinely Two hours. delighted. <laughs> You're <laughs> such a clever <laughs> little minx. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dave Mendel. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you, Francis. Uh, see Al on Strictly tomorrow. She's going all the way. Charleston. Let's watch her. Next week, Jeremy Clarkson, John Bishop, and we'll reveal this year's sports personality nominee. See you at 7 and on Monday. Bye! Amen, the Wimbledon Theatre this Christmas panto! Thank you, Thank you.